Alrighty, greetings everyone. I hope you all had a lovely Thanksgiving weekend. If uh, assuming you're in Canada, if you're in America, I hope you have a wonderful upcoming Thanksgiving weekend. Today we're going to be talking about one of the newer breakthroughs in uh, newer-ish breakthroughs in military aviation technology, and that is thrust vectoring control, also known as TVC. So, what is thrust vectoring? In basic terms, it's a method of increasing the roll, pitch, and yaw authority of an aircraft, at least in the case of maneuverability thrust vectoring. Aircraft like the Harrier, F-35B, Yak-38, and such have thrust vectoring, but it's only for straight back, straight down, or anything in between. And today we're going to be focusing more on thrust vectoring oriented towards increasing maneuverability. Maneuverability thrust vectoring was first full-scale tested in 1987, as part of the HARV or High Alpha Research Vehicle program. It used a modified FA-18 Hornet with a very crude set of thrust vectoring nozzles on each engine. The Hornet was a great choice for this program as it was already known for its prowess and high angles of attack and the program also confirmed that the TVC was capable of keeping the aircraft stable at up to 70 degrees of angle of attack which was a huge improvement over the original 55 degrees. It also showed that roll rates were increased at up to 65 degrees of angle of attack, which would have been completely impossible without TVC. The potential of this new technology was quickly realized by the US, and Lockheed Martin quickly incorporated it into their prototype YF-22 that later became the famed F-22 Raptor. The TVC capability of the YF-22 gave it impressive pitch authority, which gave it an edge in winning the ATF competition or Advanced Tactical Fighter competition for the US Air Force over the opposing YF-23. The F-22 became the first production fighter to incorporate this new technology and is still the only fighter in North America with thrust vectoring control. Soon Russia became aware of this new technology and quickly began fitting it to their already incredible maneuverable fighters, but decided to take it one step further instead of just using the two-dimensional thrust vectoring of the F-22. In this case, two-dimensional refers to thrust vectoring only along the pitch axis. Russia decided to incorporate it as three-dimensional thrust vectoring that goes along all axes of the aircraft. The Su-37 displayed incredible maneuverability that had never before been seen. Backflips, somersaults, and controlled flat spins were just some of the maneuvers this aircraft was able to perform with this new technology. Today, the same 3D thrust vectoring control is applied to the Su-30SM, the Su-35S, and the upcoming T-50 Pakfa. So how exactly does thrust vectoring work? Essentially, Thrust vectoring works by adding directional force from the exhaust gas of the engine to the pitch, roll, and yaw axes of the aircraft. It achieves this by using special nozzles at the rear of the engines that are capable of directing the gases up and down or side to side by up to 20 to 30 degrees. They work very much the same way as conventional control surfaces, except they do not require air to be flowing over those surfaces to be effective. They only require the engines to be running. This gives aircraft equipped with TVC a great advantage in low speeds and high angles of attack especially if the subject aircraft has a thrust to weight ratio of greater than one to one. For pitch, thrust vectoring nozzles will point upwards, thus putting downwards pressure on the tail and bringing the nose of the aircraft up more forcefully. The same is true for the yaw axis. Thrust is pushed this way, pushes the tail this way, and vice versa. Same for roll as well. They move in the exact same way that normal control surfaces do, but they're just 10 times more effective. This technology was used long before the YF-22 on spacecraft like the Space Shuttle and such. Because there is no air in space for control surfaces to deflect, thrust vectoring was the only feasible option to maintain control of a spacecraft while in orbit. Many technology demonstrators have been fitted with this technology, such as the F-16 Matav, the F-15 SMTD, the F-15 Active, and the X-31. Thrust vectoring will undoubtedly play a crucial role in any future combat aircraft, with aircraft like the MiG-35, Eurofighter, and Super Hornet all plan to incorporate the new technology in the future. To give you a bit of an idea of what thrust vectoring is capable of over conventional controls, here are a few short clips to give you an idea. Ladies and gentlemen, is thrust vectoring. 
I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, please feel free to give it a like, leave a comment letting me know if I missed any facts or if you have any questions, and let me know what you'd like to see in the future. And with that, keep calm and fly high, and I will see you next time.